Good morning, guys. Today I want to share with you how I take pictures of detailed, moody, beautiful insects. <laughs> Bug photography is totally awesome because bugs are totally awesome. When you look at them close up, they have so much uniqueness and character and the colors and, and everything, but it can be really hard to capture them in their natural environment. So today I want to share with you the camera that I use, the lens that I use, the settings that I use, ISO, the aperture, the, uh, the tips that I have for you, oh, and the shutter speed, the tips that I have for you and how I capture these images. So let's start with the basics, the camera. The camera that I use, it doesn't really matter which camera that you use. You can take pictures of insects. However, if you do want them to be detailed, then a higher resolution camera helps a lot because what I do is that I will zoom in on an insect with the lens and I will get to that in just one moment. But what I often have to do is I have to crop in. And the more megapixels that my images have in them, the better the crop is going to look, especially if I have to crop in really close. So my camera, as most of you know, is the Sony A992. It is 42.4 megapixels. However, I have taken images of insects at uh, 24 megapixels and they've been just great. And so, uh, yeah, that is one of my tips is to use a camera that will allow you the quality to crop in on your image. So related to that, we have the lens. Okay, so for insects, you might think that I would use a macro lens. However, I do not. I use my 70 to 300, and this is a Sony G camera lens. And uh, what I do is actually put it on my camera and I zoom into 300. There are some difficulties with this, I will admit. And one of the main ones is getting a steady shot. So it's very, very important. At 300, you're going to see lots of motion and the image is definitely potentially blurry. But if you can get the right settings, then you can offset this limitation and you can still get a great image. The first thing that I do when I am setting up my camera for insect photography is I set a higher ISO. And this is so that I can get a high enough shutter speed to capture a quick insect. Usually I will put it on ISO 800, but sometimes if it's a darker day, I will actually even increase that to 1250, 1600, depending on the situation. The higher the ISO you go though, the more grainy your image is going to be. And then that uh, cropping in is going to be more difficult. You're going to lose the details in the insect's face or its wings or whatever. So it's really important to preserve enough detail because you're looking at such a tiny subject. This is one of the areas in which uh, another area in which a higher megapixel camera is helpful because then you can get up to higher ISOs and uh, not lose as much detail. So here I am at ISO 800 quite often and I have to set a fast enough shutter speed and an aperture that works as well. So for shutter speed, it's very important, depending on the subject that you have, that it be pretty fast. If you are, if you have found, there was one day that I found this monarch butterfly and it had just come out of its cocoon. Monarch butterflies are known when they come out of their cocoons to sit pretty still on a leaf nearby. So in that case, I don't need a high shutter speed and I can adjust all of my other settings for that situation. However, most of the time with insects, they are quick. They come and they land and they take off or they're in flight or they are just 
moving and it seems like, oh, I can capture that, but they're faster than you think. So shutter speed, I think for insects, I go as high as I can in the situation without bringing my ISO up too high or losing uh, detail due to a too low aperture. So generally, if I am at one, uh, sorry, if I am at 300 millimeters on my lens, I am going to be at about 1 500th of a second or faster on my image, depending, as I said, on the speed of the insect. The way that I achieve this is finding a balance with the aperture. So the aperture is going to give me a depth of field. So if I'm taking an image of a grasshopper, for example, and I have it on F4 and I focus on its eye, then I may have the eye in focus and the rest of the body out of focus. Normally, I don't want that. For an insect, for such a small creature, I really like when most of it is in focus because the whole insect is beautiful. The whole insect is interesting. It's something that we don't get to see close up very often. And so I prefer to have a higher aperture. That's not to say that I don't sometimes go for a lower aperture. I do, it depends. But most of the time I am up pretty high. So I will take test pictures. I will go from say F8 to F22 or higher, and I will see what works. Most of the time when I get home to my computer, I will find that F22 or above is the best, but it's not always possible. So the higher the ISO, the higher the aperture, and the higher the shutter speed means that I will get a sharp in focus image of an insect. This is difficult to achieve, especially with a 300 millimeter lens. However, it can be done. And a couple of tips that I have for you. One, try to go out in bright sunlight. I will go out in bright, bright midday sun, talking about 12 o'clock, the sun is right overhead and I will work with that. Insects will quite often find themselves in a shady location anyway. So the ambient light from the sun is a fantastic tool for getting the settings that you need for insect photography. I want to encourage you, if you have your camera on you and you see an insect that looks really interesting, take a picture. Don't worry about what your settings are. Don't worry about time of day. Don't worry about anything. The first thing I want you to do is just take a picture because <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have missed a shot because I stopped to adjust a setting or I stopped to set up and then it's gone. Don't do this. Just take a picture and then go and do your setup. At least you will have captured that moment. So in terms of focus, this is a really, really important subject in terms of taking pictures of bugs and insects. It's really important to focus on the area of the subject that you want to have sharp. And the question is, do you use manual focus or do you use autofocus? And the answer for me is I've used both. So if I'm in a situation where the insect is not moving too, too fast, but it is maybe quick, but my autofocus on my camera is really great uh, in this lens. I will use autofocus and I will quickly, uh, I will put on spot focus and I will quickly find the insect's eye. And then I will hold the shutter button down and recompose. I find that for me, this works really well in terms of getting the eye in focus because just like an image of a person or a portrait, this is a portrait of an insect and I want the eye in focus. You'll find that you can have an absolutely fantastic image, say of a butterfly or something else. The wings are all beautifully in focus, but if the face, if the eye is not in focus, you're gonna be unhappy with that image. So quite often I will use autofocus and I will just make sure that I get the eye and then 
that my aperture is high enough to also get the rest of the body uh, in focus. However, sometimes I have to move to manual focus. And that was the case with my dragonflies <laughs> in, uh, in the pond when I was camping. I was trying to capture these dragonflies. They were fantastic, but I wanted to capture one in flight. So we're talking a very, very, very fast uh, creature here. And there is absolutely no way that I could have captured it in flight with autofocus. The camera was not fast enough to capture it because literally I would be standing there with my camera and whoosh, that's how fast it was going through the frame. So I put the camera on manual focus and I focused on say a bush or a tree that was next to where the dragonfly kept flying. And so I put my manual focus there. I put the depth of field up so that I had a little bit in front, a little bit behind that bush, that tree. And then I just held the camera and I waited. And <laughs> I waited and I waited. Patience is very important. And I waited until the dragonfly flew through that spot and I had it on continuous, uh, continuous drive. So when I pushed the shutter button, it would just take pictures really, really fast, one after another. And I did this and I think I took maybe about a hundred photos before I got the shot that I wanted. And I think that was a success because quite often it might take more than that to get, uh, to get the image of an insect in flight. So that was my method for capturing the, uh, the dragonfly in flight. And even so, I had to work in post-production and editing just to make sure that it was sharp enough and that the rest of the composition was correct. I did have to crop. And uh, that was another trick is that I had my uh, lens open wider so that I could crop in because I didn't know where I was going to capture that dragonfly on the screen. So yes, editing. Editing is really important when you are working with your insect photos. I mean, you may be so fabulous that you can get a perfect image right off the bat. Perfect composition, perfect sharpness, perfect color, everything. I shoot in raw, so I need to edit anyway. And, uh, and I love doing that. So for myself, I use Lightroom and then Photoshop. And I really get into the process and just because it's an insect it's a a creature in nature and it has its technical um, the way that it looks how it uh, is <laughs> I don't know how to describe that but just because it's an a natural thing and you're trying to record what this insect actually looks like okay doesn't mean that you can't get creative with the image. And so that is something I encourage you to do. Uh, accentuate maybe where the light is entering the photo. Uh, make sure that the, the insect's face is in, in beautiful focus, but maybe you'll soften up the things around it. I don't know, but it is still a beautiful, creative uh, image. And so get creative, get creative. Thank you for coming along. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye guys.